Hey, Danny, how's it going? Hey, Didi, what's up? So, virtual networks are here. SDN is here. But from what I can tell, unless we pay close attention to the physical platforms, the physical network, it can make all the difference between SDN a success and SDN a disaster. So tell us a little more about that, starting out with what is this box you've got here and what do you have in that jewelry box in there? Yeah, Didi, so you're absolutely right. The box, it's one of Juniper's premier platforms. It's our MX series router. This is what we use to connect pods within data centers. We use it for data center interconnect and even connecting to uh, remote public clouds. As for the box, this is Juniper's programmable silicon and it's actually what sits inside of the MX. And so the combination of this and our operating system, Junos, this is what really allows us to make the advancements in the programmability with SDN and let it be a successful implementation instead of disaster. Wow, tell me more. Yeah, let's take a look at the whiteboard that I have drawn up and uh, we'll go into a little more detail. So Danny, what have you got scribbled up here? I can see that the MX series became the center of your universe. <laughs> it did, Didi. So what I'm showing you here is a single data center. And in okay. today's data center, there's really three categories if you look at servers, right? We've got our bare metal boxes, so the non-x86 like mainframes and AIX. You've got IP storage. Mm -hmm. um, and then you move down, you have your L4 through 7, your firewalls, your load balancers, NAT devices. And then we've got our VMs, so you know, VMware's ESX or KVM or Zen. These are all the components in today's data center. Okay. But what we're doing with SDN is we're starting to take some of the workloads that sit here, we're moving them into our SDN, these private cloud networks that we're starting to build. And now we have this controller that sits in our network. So we're talking VXLAN or some overlay protocol on one side of our data center. And now there's a new, con a new routing protocol that has to talk to these environments as well. So this would be like a NSX or a Juniper Contrail. Would those be good examples? Exactly, Didi, yes. Makes sense. So I understand layer two and people talk about that, but why is layer three important? Yeah, so keep in mind, Didi, these guys are all talking to each other, layer two and layer three in our existing data centers. Mm -hmm. They don't all sit in the same subnet. Mm -hmm. So think about a web server and a database server. Sure. Most likely, they're not going to be in the same subnet. Yep. So let's say we've migrated the web server to this environment first. And maybe the database server sits here, or maybe it's bare metal. It'll never be virtualized mm -hmm. or, or SDN enabled. So what that means is we have to have a way to not only strip the SDN header off, de-encapsulate that protocol, but perform the IP routing lookup move it into a different broadcast. Right. right. Okay, no, so that makes a lot of sense. So what are you calling this technology? <laughs> We're calling it USG, Universal SDN Gateway. Okay. And the idea behind the universal is that we're really providing that any-to-any -any SDN to anything else type of connectivity. So let me give you another example, actually. Sure. Let's say you take some of these VMs, and now we build another island of SDN. We okay. create this second pod, more okay. workload. For example, maybe we've exceeded the growth here. Maybe it's a risk factor. We don't want to have it, all these devices under the same administrator. Or domain. you're going with another SDN vendor. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So NSX here, Contrail here. Sure. Well, what we've done, though, is we've created another SDN protocol here. We've introduced another controller here. Right. Two sets, two different uh, control planes. They have no way of exchanging routes with each other unless we do it for them. So the real power of the MX and that programmability is that I can take routes from here, mm -hmm. layer two and layer three mm -hmm. information, exchange them with the other controller, and provide all the data plane functionality in between. Good. So now I get the universal. It's like any to any, SDN to SDN, SDN to layer three. Now, you know, that definitely makes a lot of sense. So, but this is still one data center. Can you do the same functionality across data centers and clouds? Absolutely. I told you it was universal. Let me talk to you about what we're doing for the remote connectivity. Tell me more. Wow, Danny, now I see more boxes. I see a MX series here, another MX series there, data center one, two. What's going on? Yeah, Didi. So earlier we were talking about what it looked like inside of the data center and how everything was communicating. Now, if you look at connecting outside the data center, mm -hmm. You know, if our customers previously would use things like VPLS or L3 VPN, the open standards protocols, and that was really right. a best practice in the WAN. Now we've even introduced eVPN to do that connectivity. And then GRE, let's say, to get to a branch office. But where the real magic happens is how do I go from my SDN environment into my WAN protocols and then come out on the other side and connect even to another uh, SDN environment? The beauty of the MX is that I can do this all on the same platform. 
So come out of the SDN encapsulation, mm -hmm. do the L2 lookup, do the L3 lookup, go directly into my WAN encapsulation, all in the same platform. Well, and you know, maintaining this open standards thing, which you know, Juniper is really committed to. So I get Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, if somebody did not have a programmable chip and the Juno software, how would somebody else do the same functionality? The idiot really comes down to multiple boxes. So okay. I'd remove the SDN in one box, come native IP, go into DMX, do that whole thing, and then reverse it on the other side. Uh, that's really the only other way to do it. Wow, so either multiple boxes or you take a performance hit or both. Exactly. Well, now that you've explained this to me, Danny, this picture that you've drawn looks a lot similar like the previous one. I mean, the fact that these are two different locations, they're treated seamlessly from a manage, you know, management perspective. These look like a single data center. Is that what the MX is trying to get at? DD, that's what it's all about. It's really creating that seamless connectivity, and that's what SDN's really all about. Wow, I get it now.